Hey guys, what's going on? So as you've probably witnessed over the past little while here, I've gone from deplete complete depression at the beginning of the streak to now I'm getting a little manic. You see, I can't sit still. I'm all excited. My thoughts are going a thousand miles an hour. So if I'm doing videos these days and I go off on different tangents, especially like when me and the Queen's Man are trucking down the road and I just branch off into boom, 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 boom. You'll know it's because when you get manic, as a lot of you know, but I'm going to tell anybody that doesn't, or if you think you could be manic and are looking for signs, you get rapid thought progression. So you interrupt people a lot when they're speaking because you don't want to forget what you're thinking because you're afraid if you well obviously if you don't say in time you forget you may not remember what you wanted to say that's the whole point so a lot of people in their manic will just interrupt you right in the middle of the conversation and say oh can I say this real quick oh wait wait I need to say this or they'll just flat out break in. So you'll be telling the story about how the, your dog died and all of a sudden they'll go, Hey, guess where I went last night? You ever tried one of those new chalupas at Taco Bell? And you're like, what the hell? I'm sitting here telling a story about how my dog died. And to me it's very emotional and heartbreaking. And you break in with Taco Bell? What the hell? See, if you don't understand the signs of mania, it might piss you off if somebody keeps breaking in during conversations. So that can also be a sign of the stigma of mental illness. If somebody doesn't know what mania is, and here again, that could be an example If they don't understand that you're shooting thoughts from a million miles away all at once, they may get pissed when you interrupt them. So I guess that brings it back full circle. And this doesn't make a whole lot of friggin' sense. That's because my mind is shooting a million miles an hour like I just said. Got it? So, just know... That if you're with somebody that you think may be bipolar or maybe you just don't understand why they're always interrupting your speech or what you're saying. Because see, it doesn't really matter so much to somebody that's going through the cycle what you're saying they need to get out there what they want to say so they will interrupt you that's the whole point of this discussion so when you could sit there and have a conversation with somebody about your dog dying they can show you the proper empathy and believe me if somebody that's bipolar is depressed, they will sit there and cry for you. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, that's horrible. I think about death all the time. <laughs> but when you're manic, see, it's like, Woo! <laughs> I'm sorry, but as you're talking, I've got five billion thoughts banging around through my head. And of course, everything a manic person has to say is the most important thing. So of course, they're going to interrupt you. Because then you get into the irrational side of mania. The grandiose side of mania. Where the person experiencing said mania thinks everything that they have to say or do is of the most importance at the time. So, I guess what I'm saying in all this K 
chaos is. If somebody interrupts your speech a lot and you take it personally, make sure that person isn't just having a manic episode. Because a lot of times when we do these kind of things in mania, we're not trying to be a dick about it or piss you off or pretend that what you're saying doesn't hold high importance to us. The fact of the matter is, we're just worried about saying everything we gotta say. And if we're high up on the hog, we're thinking what we got to say is more important than what you got to say. Where if we're in a normal period, we would understand the gravity of the situation. So, I hope this little disorganizational speech can help you understand maybe why people act the way they do when they do. Because, see, in an hour, maybe they will be able to understand the situation and rationalize the situation and listen to you and show empathy because as mentally ill people we are very empathetic by and large just all depending on where the old screws are currently placed in the brain of where the liquids are flowing and that kind of thing so, hope y'all well, hope you're doing good. Sounds like we're finally gonna get some friggin' snow around here. We're like, the year, you know that movie, the year without a Santa Claus. This is like, the years and years without snow. And I don't know what the frick, but I guess on Sunday, we'll be pulling out. The guy on the news report said, not only will you need your shovel, you better pull out the machine. The problem is I don't have one. So what am I going to do? I guess I'll have to double time it on the kids. Say, get your butt out there, shovel that frickin' ground. You better go out every half hour. And see, when they go to tell me, yo, Pops, I'm too tired, I can't do it right now. I'll just talk over then, because what I'll have to say will be more important. <laughs> I'm just kidding with y'all. I want to liven things up tonight, make things a little funnier, see if more people be interested in a crazy boy instead of a sober, sad boy. All right, guys. <laughs> We'll talk to you later.